Hi, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Framework by Pegasus Steel. Framework is from renowned designer Juve Rosenberg. This is one of his newest games to come out. And uh, disclaimer, I am a big fan of Juve's work. Um, I know Sam enjoys some of his games as well, such as Patchwork. Um, that's been, been one of our longtime classic games that we play a lot. Well, Framework is a different type of game. It is a tile laying game in which you are trying to race to get rid of all your scoring markers. And the reason why it's called Framework, you have these frames that are going to be on a lot of the different tiles. That's going to help you to achieve those scoring objectives. It'll make much more sense when I explain it down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, here's Framework from Pegasus Spiel and Edition Spielweiss. And this is from designer Juve Rosenberg, and so you know it's going to be good, right? Uh, let me show you guys how this tile laying game works. In this, you are going to have a bag, a big bag, and inside this big bag are a bunch of tiles. Each player is also going to have 22 scoring tokens that they are going to be racing, trying to uh, deplete themselves of. In fact, the person who is able to get rid of their 22 scoring tokens first, they are going to be the winner. Now, your tiles are going to come in one of eight different variations, as you can see here. You are either going to have no rings or frames, excuse me, on a tile, one frame, two frames, or three frames. In addition to this, you are going to have either no scoring objectives, as there are none on this one, one, two, or three scoring objectives. And by scoring objectives, I'm talking about the numbers that you see there in the middle. And so uh, your tile that you draw from the bag is going to be in one of these eight variations. And uh, this will make much more sense as I explain the rules to you as to what the frames and the, the numbers mean. Just know that the numbers are the objectives that you are going to be covering with your scoring tokens. And so uh, the more scoring objectives that you have, the more likely you are to be able to, to, to rid yourself of your scoring tokens. Now, how this game is going to work, you're going to designate a start player, and that's going to be the youngest player at the table, and you will give them the bag, and they will draw from the bag a number of tiles equal to the number of players plus one. So in a two-player game, you would draw three tiles, and so we will put out three tiles in the middle of the play area, like so. And uh, that player would pick the first tile that they want to add to their own playing area. Each person has their own little playing area that they are adding tiles to. You don't add on to a community tile laying area. And you don't play on other players' playing areas. You just play on your own. So maybe they take this one here. And uh, then it would be the next player, and they would take a tile and add it in their area. Then it would go back to the first player, and they would have to take whatever tile is left over remaining, and you would add it to your playing area. Now, you have to add it adjacent to a tile that is already on your playing area. And so maybe they add it right here like so. And then the bag would go to the next player, and they would repeat the process. And the game would continue until somebody rids themselves of all of their scoring objectives. So what is it that you are trying to accomplish in this game? Well, you are trying to achieve these different scoring objectives. And what it is that you're trying to do is you're trying to get a number of frames that are connected to this tile. So I want three brown frames connected to this tile in order to achieve that scoring objective. Here's a brown frame right here. You can see that this frame around it is brown. And if I were to lay this tile right next to this particular tile, then I have one frame. I would need two more frames, either touching here, here, or here, or touching this tile, connecting it to it, uh, to the scoring objective is valid as well. To, to demonstrate that, if I had this tile right here, I would need six yellow frames. And I could add this tile here to connect it for one. I could add this tile right here, which would give me two more. And let's say I put it on this side. So now I'm up to three. I could add this one right here, and that would give me four. And maybe I would add this one uh, to it. Let's just put it right here, for instance. And that would give me five. If I got one more, then I could put a token covering up that spot. 
Now, at any point, I may complete more than one frame once I add a tile to a certain spot, and I can cover that up. Just because I'm going for this one doesn't mean that I might inadvertently complete one of the other scoring objectives. So you constantly want to look at all of your tiles, all of your scoring objectives, because you might inadvertently complete one of them by placing a tile. Uh, that's something that you constantly have to be looking at in this game. Now, there are different types of scoring objectives. For instance, this tile right here can be completed with a combination of either the yellow or brown uh, frames. And so I would want a combination of six of those to uh, check this one off. And then I would want to try to get nine and then I'd want to try to get 12. That's how this tile works. Whereas this tile right here I would need to get six of the yellow frames first before I could try and get one of the silver frames. That's what the arrow here means. And then uh, there is one other type of tile, and that is this tile right here, where I need to get either or. So it either needs to be three yellow uh, frames or three red frames. It cannot be a combination of the two, like how this one was. It has to be one or the other. So that's the gist of the game. You are going to race to try to deplete yourself of 22 scoring tokens. If you are playing with younger kids or if you're playing with somebody who's not as experienced as some of the other players at the table, you might take some of their tokens away. You might take four or five away from them so that they have fewer to work with to make the game more even. And you might play that way. There is also a solo mode for this game in which you are going to play with this board right here, which is going to store up to two of your tiles. And so how this is going to work, let me clear out the area here. You would draw from the bag one tile. So maybe this is the tile I take and I have to decide immediately if I want to put it in my playing area or if I want to store it. Maybe I want to store it. So then I would draw another tile from the bag and I would have to decide, do I want to play this or do I want to store it? Now, I only have two spots to store, so I could not store a third tile. Uh, but let's just say I do store it and uh, I would have to immediately play this one. So I have to play it right there. Now, instead of drawing from the bag, I could play one of these two tiles that I have stored over here on my board. And maybe I do that. I don't know. I'm not really thinking about what my strategy is here. I'm just going to play that there. Now, on my next turn, I could play this one and completely clear up this board, or I could draw from the back. This is going to continue until I get all of my scoring tiles out, at which point then I'm going to score the game. Now, I have to show you what that's going to look like, so I'm going to go ahead and play a game and jump straight to the end. All right, so I have now finished a solo game, and this is what it looks like at the end. Once you have placed all of your scoring objective tokens here, I have 22 of them out, the game ends immediately, and you are going to find a spot on your playing area where you have a five by five completed grid. So I don't have one of those, but I do almost have one as this is almost a five by five grid. And so this is going to be the one that I play with, and I would add from the bag one tile for filling in any empty spots. So I would just take any random tile. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference to the game. Um, and I would just add it in right here. And now this is going to be my five by five grid. I get negative one point for every tile that is outside of that five by five grid. So I have a total of five. And that, so that means my score is negative five. You are wanting to try to get the lowest score possible um, or well, closest to zero as possible. And so uh, if I wanted to play again, I would try to beat five. I would want to try to make all of my 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 tiles try to stay in a five by five grid and that is how you play the solo mode i did forget to mention that in the regular game uh, the multiplayer game the game can also end if the bag of tiles ever runs out at which point whoever has the fewest remaining scoring objective tokens they are going to be the winner if it's a tie the game is going to end in a tie and that is how you play framework let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one and we're back, and now we're gonna share our thoughts on framework from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. So Sam, first impression, seeing this out on the table, what'd you think? Um, it seems very simple. It was very easy to understand. Um, there's not there's not a lot to it when you first see it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, when I was reading through the rules, I thought, what, uh, what, what that this is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's not a difficult game to understand, like you said, and then you get into it, and you start to see 
oh man, there are, if I'm not paying attention to what I'm creating here, I can miss out on yes. a lot of scoring opportunities. Yes. Atlanta's definitely better at this game than I was, but I did enjoy it. I'm kind of jumping to the end here, <laughs> but I did enjoy it and made me realize after I played it, I could have done a lot better. Yeah. There's a lot of paying attention. <laughs> yeah. So it's a deceiving game, in other words, when we're talking about first impressions, yeah. because on the surface, it looks like there's not much to it. Yeah. You get into it and you start to see, oh, I did not realize this. And, and for like you just said, and I'll agree with you, it makes you want to play the game again because you start to understand, I missed that there. I missed this over here. And I want to try again and, and get yeah. better at this. Um, the bag that you put all these tiles in, um, it, it, it feels like you fill the bag to the brim. Yeah. And there's not any room to really kind of dig around and, yeah. and, and get the tiles. Um, as far as component-wise go, normally we don't talk too much about components. But I do want to throw that out there. I wish the bag was even bigger than what it is. It is a big bag, but yeah, we're talking about big tiles. Yeah, if you're going to have that much stuff in it. Yeah, yeah the, the bag should be just a little bit bigger. Um, Gameplay-wise for you, figuring out what to do, how to do it, and, and succeed in this game, what was that like for you as a non-gamer? It was really easy to understand what I was supposed to do. But then when doing it, I kept... Uh, messing up okay so you'll have a green i wish i could like i need like a visual whiteboard <laughs> here that, why i had a hard time you'll have a card that has a yellow border but green in the middle sure and i kept switching that and being like okay i need a yellow next to it no you need green next yeah. to it yeah and so the border helps other cards it has nothing to do with that unless your 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 scoring objective matches the board yes yeah. yes and which so can happen that part i found myself a couple times mixing it up and, okay. and thinking i needed three yellow borders when I, I need three green borders yeah i think this is a game that because it's so simple the rules are so or what you're doing on your turn is so simple you're just taking a tile and putting it somewhere that's all you do. And, and if you fill a, fulfill a scoring objective, then putting out one of your little counters, that because you're not really having to think five different things on your turn, that you're likely to just do something and it's over and you didn't really think it through. You're, you're flying, you're, you know, you're driving too yes, fast in this I game. I found myself focusing on the cards or the tiles that were just laid down and forgetting about yeah, some. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you miss out on points that way. Yeah. But at the same time, you you cannot do all of them. Some of them you just have to sacrifice. You have to put yeah, them down. Yeah, for sure. Because, so which ones are you scoring off of? And, and that right there is where this game yes. lies. Yes. Yes, is figuring out which scoring objectives are easy enough for you to accomplish to get one of your things out there and which ones you just, you shouldn't go for, especially yes. if they come later in the game. Yes. So. All right, so let's get to pros and, and cons for this game framework here. What were the things that really worked for you? I mean, it's easy to understand. It, it is, it's just I had brain parts that <laughs> okay. didn't allow me to do well, but it is a very thinky game. It's a, a, a thinky game in a small package. I mean, the, the board game is, or the box is a relatively... Yeah, the box is deceiving. This It's a I very mean, small game. Yeah, it's a bag it of tiles. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a little deceiving at how thinky it is, but it's also at the same time not a difficult game. Yeah. Um, which is kind of my, it's that's my sweet spot for games. I want it to be easy to understand, but I want to have to use my brain and try to figure things out. Usually I'm better at those okay. than Lance is. Okay. Um, but I also really like the scoring. Um, it's simply the person, the person who's done with their tiles first there's no yeah. numbers there's no okay wait let's see what numbers you covered up right and you oh you were out first but lance yeah. got more this is just a race game. and i feel like that's yeah. perfect for non-gamers i mean yeah yeah i will agree with that yeah this is just a simple concept get rid of your scoring markers yeah yeah what doesn't work for you i i thought about this when we were playing the game if there was a different way to put on the tiles what needed to be next to it versus the border but there really isn't there's not an easier way to distinguish that okay i think i just i need to play it more yeah yeah the tiles may be a little too stark a little too bare 
Um, maybe if the number in the middle was a little bigger, okay. maybe that would help. I understand like it, it's just the same size as a little. Yeah, because you really want to cover up that yeah, thing when but you put I, your I do. I think on it. one, it would take up more of the tile, which would be yeah. maybe a little bit more appealing, but it would draw your eye to that middle versus the border. Yeah, I, I will agree with that because I found myself a lot of times, uh, and like we've mentioned, forgetting that I even had that scoring objective there that I could have done. Because I feel like a couple of them, like the red and the brown, are very similar. Yes, yeah. Um, and those can get mixed up. Kind I will of. definitely agree with that. The red and brown are too close together. And if you're not playing in a well-lit area like a filming studio, then you, you can easily get those mixed yeah. up. Now their textures are different, but if you're not really looking but at that closely. But that's not very clear on the number. Yeah. It's very, very small right. on the number. So if the yeah. number was bigger and you could see the texture better, yeah. I would also probably help people that were colorblind or something like sure. that a little bit better yeah. as well. But overall, again, that's a little nitpicky, but that was what I had the hardest part. Sure, no, I'll, I'll agree with that. All right, scale of one to 10, love to hate. Where does framework fall for you? Um, I really like this game. I'm going to give it a score, but I feel like the score is going to go up the more I play it. Okay. So just from playing it a few times, I would give it a 7.8. Wow. 7.8. But I do feel like... With room for growth. Yeah. If okay. I played it more and really figured out my strategy better, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's a good game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, this game is very reminiscent of a family classic that's been around for a while and you can find it in any Walmart or Target and that's Quirkle. To me, this game feels very similar to Quirkle. Quirkle was a big bag of tiles that yeah. you put out trying to get rid of your tiles and, and create Quirkles and score points. Now the objectives are different with this game, but it's still a tile laying trying to score points, essentially getting rid of your scoring markers. This is a little more brain burny, if that makes sense, yeah. than Quirkle. Quirkle was great with little kids. Not little kids, younger. but younger kids. Seven, eight-year-olds. Framework is probably great with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14-year-olds. Yeah. The box says ages eight and up. That might work. Yeah. I think 10 is probably a good good round age for that. Um, but it, it, it's, in my thought, it's the same uh, room for success that Quirkle has, if that makes sense, because it's such a simple concept and it does it well. Okay. Um, because of that, it gets really good mark remarks from me, um, really good score. I'm gonna give it a 7.9. <laughs> I thought I thought I was gonna be uh, you know way higher than Sam, but she was just real close yeah. to me, 7.8. So um, yeah, no, this game just really works for me and. Uh, you know, I do like what Juve Rosenberg puts out. And so this is another good one. So, uh, but that's our thoughts on a framework from Pegasus Spiel. Go check it out. Leave some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this one. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.